Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this. I'm just I'm just piling right in today. No, no preamble. Um, this is about number about the sixth one, I think, that I've done. So I'm I'm a I'm a pro at doing this now. So I'm just gonna wade straight in. So hi and welcome to this, my presentation on how to overcome the learning barrier and progress your career in SQL. I'm Nick Holt from the BI School and anyone who's seen me speak before will know that I am uh, I'm all about, I specialize in SQL and helping people getting started in um, SQL related data careers. Now, certain careers rely very heavily on SQL such as data analyst, uh, finance analyst, data engineer, uh, data science, anything at all in business intelligence. And people can see SQL as this huge barrier placed right across your path. So I'm going to be talking about how best to learn SQL, how to overcome the fear, the trepidation of learning SQL, and what to focus on, uh, how to focus on it, and in short, how to plan your route to success in SQL and your career. So let's begin by finding out a little bit about who you are and where you're from. So if you could type your location into the chat box, I'll see who and where I am presenting to this evening. So uh, so we've had a hello. Oh, um, yeah, so tell me where you're from. And um, I was just, I'm just interested to know how how far across the globe I'm, uh, I'm speaking today. So Manchester, oh, it's not too far from myself. Oh, Henry, hi, Henry. Pakistan, very good. India, okay, very good. Um, Birmingham, very good. Very good. Any more for any more? Oh, Texas, USA. Lovely. Originally from Latvia. From Latvia to Montrose, blimey. That's, uh, that's quite a journey across the world. Birmingham again, blimey. Okay, so let's carry on. I'll read a few, a few more of those out in a bit if I get some. Um, so my aim for the workshop today is, number one, to provide you with as much advice, guidance and information as I can. Uh, it's impossible to give you everything in a single session, probably just under an hour. But what I can offer will be of great value. And it's the main reason we're here today. Uh, secondly, I'd like to introduce you to the SQL Superhero program. Um, this is something I offer where I can work alongside you, with you, to probably help you kickstart your data career. And more on that later. And no questions are off limits. I'm here to help as much as possible. So if you do have questions, can I ask you to type them into the Q&A box? Um, and I'll do my best to get through all those at the end. And I'm going to try and make this as interactive as possible. Um, so I'll ask you from time to time to provide an answer to or response in the chat window. It'll be much more interesting and engaging if you kind of join in with that. Uh, don't worry, I'll not be singling out people, anything, or asking you to speak or anything like that. I'm just trying to make sure it's a bit more interesting, a bit more fun, where possible. Okay. I mean, we're talking about SQL, so obviously it's fun. Okay. Now, uh, um, it would help me to be able to deliver content and information that's of the greatest benefit, both for this session and future sessions. Um, if you could answer this for me, what are you looking to get out of this um, this session? Um, so please type that into the uh, chat box. We're very interested to hear that. So maybe you're not all that familiar with SQL and you don't know where to start. Could be that you just don't know what exactly to focus on. Um, perhaps you've tried online courses, but it's not working out. That's a big one. Uh, maybe you've got a decent grasp of uh, SQL, but certain elements of the language are causing you problems. Or maybe you understand the commands and language, but aren't sure how to put that into practice in a real world situation. So if you'd let me know kind of what you're hoping to get out of this, that would be really interesting and cool. So thank you. So I'll be talking about all those things I just mentioned there on today's session um, and ways you can overcome those hurdles. So please type those answers into those chat boxes. So Shelley says to get a little bit more focused on learning SQL, I can't seem to move from tutorials to practice. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so hopefully my answers some questions like that and similar ones as we go along. Learning roadmap certifications associated. Okay, I'm looking for a career. Oh, slow down, slow down. Into data analytics, doing Google data analytics for that purpose and learn basic SQL. Beginner for SQL, still many moment. 
to, uh, more top secrets for me. Okay, yeah, a lot of stuff that you could don't quite understand. New to data analytics, needing SQL, uh, best route to learn the right practical things that jobs are looking for. Perfect, right. That's just the sort of thing I was hoping for. So that's good. Let's crack on. Now, here's your view. Um, as you progress comfortably down the path, the road of your own career. Lovely, isn't it? Straight road ahead. Nice and relaxing. You finish college, get a job, learn Excel or whatever skills you need to do your job well. Picking up some good soft skills like communication, learning how to organize yourself. Uh, you're doing great, earning some money. Your parents are proud of you, proud of your progress. And then wallop. If you want this promotion, that better job, that increased salary, that additional challenge, that respect and progression, there's something standing in your way. And it is a technical skill, SQL. And you think, oh, holy crap, I need to learn a programming language. I need to take on this whole new thing, learn all this new stuff. Um, it's totally new. And you are pleased with yourself, as I was when you figured out V lookups in Excel, but this, <laughs> this is something else. And you know, it's easy to get downhearted like this chap here. Look at his little face. Poor fella, he needs cheering up. Now this man's feeling down in the dumps because um, he felt like he was doing well, but deep down he probably knew that he needed to scale up at some point. Um, and you can only get so far with basic skills like Excel or whatever if you're an analyst. Now he's seen a, a job ad for a much better paid role that said he must be proficient in SQL, whatever that means. Um, and in fact, that's actually a really good question, because what does it mean? You'll find a lot of job adverts use language like proficiency in SQL. Um, and it's not very explicit and it's not very helpful. So you see a job ad for an entry level data analyst role that says proficiency in SQL. And then right next to it, an ad for a data engineering role also says proficient in SQL, and it's totally different ends of the spectrum. I mean, do you actually know what specific SQL skills you need to land an entry-level data analyst role or for a senior analyst or for financial reporting or BI analyst or developer or a data engineer? Let me know in the chat box if you found it a bit, found yourself a bit bamboozled by the language used in job adverts, because it's not always that clear, is it? And I can tell you for certain that it's not the same for all those kind of job roles. It's like learning a spoken language. So if you're learning a language to go on holiday and order meals and drinks, you'd have a different learning experience than if you're going to take part in business meetings or political debate or, you know, commentate on a Russian horse race or something. So this is part of the problem. People don't know what to learn for the target role. I don't even know if they have horse racing in Russia, but. If they did, I imagine that. Anyway, so if you're new to SQL and if the scenario I just described um, applies to you, you might even wonder why SQL? What's so good about it anyway? Um, so let's talk about that. Why SQL? Well, SQL is a method of managing data, either extracting data to feed into a third party visualization tool like Excel, Power BI, Tableau. Uh, for example, also for building, managing, and maintaining data systems so you can create databases, tables, views, and store procedures. All of these are methods for storing, managing data and data flows. That's the passage of data between systems. SQL is everywhere and is growing, and that's a fact. Um, cloud database technologies are coming along and changing the data landscape, but they still we uh, rely on SQL. This is stuff like Azure, GCP, and AWS. You might not have worked with these, but you might have heard of them. It's all new. We're told it's the future, and it is. And SQL remains at the heart of all this new database technology. Um, the SQL skills you'll learn today will still be relevant in 10 or 20 years' time. And employers are paying good money for people who have the technical skills. Um, data is a growing industry. It's huge and getting bigger as companies strive to um, survive and grow in a difficult global economy. They do this by making critical business decisions you know, based on accurate and insightful data analysis provided by people with strong technical skills, SQL, Excel, Power BI, et cetera. So that's um, SQL. Um, that's why SQL. So hopefully, if there's any new information for you there, you might be able to see now why jumping on that SQL bandwagon 
by doing that, you're giving yourself and your career a chance, a real chance, a chance to grow, to develop, to give you something to be proud of, to give you something to excel in, to earn a decent salary, and in turn to provide for yourself and your family. OK, so it's given you the opportunity to give yourself in your career a big kickstart. And that's what I do. I help people achieve exactly that. So I've asked the question, why SQL? And answered it. Now I'm asking, why not SQL? Why are people not learning this subject and doing all those things I just said? Well, through conversations with lots of people at various stages in their careers, from the very beginnings to experienced people, I've identified five Main reasons, five problems, which I'll talk you through right now. And I call these the big problems with SQL. Uh, perhaps if I'd given it some thought, I could have come up with a better name for that than that. But that's what we've got. So that's what we're sticking with. So anyway, so this is learning problem number one. And it all stems from people looking at job adverts and seeing that you need to learn SQL in order to get a job, a job which represents the natural kind of next progression of your career. And at this stage, if you don't know much or anything about SQL, it can be um, it can be daunting. Now, maybe there's a team of BI developers that you work alongside or data engineers in your workplace, and you've seen a load of SQL code on their monitors at work, and you think there's so much to learn, I could never do that. And you're wrong, by the way, you can, and I'll explain how um, later. Uh, maybe you have some awareness of SQL if you're working with Excel or Power BI. Um, you've seen some complex queries. And perhaps you're intimidated by how complicated they look. Or maybe you've had no exposure to SQL. Maybe you don't even know what it is or what it does. And all these are perfectly valid and perfectly common responses. So uh, a lot of people feel the fear um, from a very early stage. And it's off-putting. It can be overwhelming. So I'll demonstrate how to address that shortly. Uh, and number two is this. Um, not knowing where to begin, where to start. And this makes perfect sense because how are you supposed to know? Sometimes it's easy to be overwhelmed by what can seem like a lot to, to go ahead and learn when it isn't actually all that bad, but it can seem that way when you're starting out. And to be honest, the mistake most people make is to take no action at all, meaning that, of course, nothing ever changes. Being a, uh, and you stay in that unsatisfying or low-paid job, and that's not going to help. So you don't know SQL, so you might Google how to learn SQL or SQL tutorial. And you'll find plenty of videos where someone will talk you through the basics, but there's never a step two, no follow on. And even the complete courses you can buy often go about things in a bit of a topsy turvy way. Now it's really important that you learn SQL in the right way. And by that, I mean learning the various topics in the right order. Now, during my career, I've always been the guy that junior technical developers would be sent to to teach them SQL. I must have taught about 50 junior developers over the years. And during that time, I've been quietly making notes, making little tweaks and twiddles to my methods and techniques and figuring out the most efficient um, order of learning and therefore of teaching. And in that time, I've developed what I call my SQL roadmap to explain this and i'll share that with you later i'll literally give that to you if you stay till the end but you have to stay till the end or you don't get it uh, it's basically my life's work but you can all have a copy it's not necessarily a great secret i just want to share it out okay so is all this making sense uh, please remember to ask any questions in that q a box so my q a box at the minute looks kind of empty um, and that's because it is. So any questions, you just pop them in there and we will. I will address those at the end. OK, so number three, um, and this is a big one, where you try online courses without success. One sec. Now, I'm not going to badmouth online course providers because it works for some people, but for others, not so much. Now, I've taken about 30 people into my academy in recent months, and they all said the same things. Uh, I tried online learning, but it wasn't for me. I kept starting courses and then quitting. I needed more guidance. I wanted to ask questions, but there was no means to do that. Now, um, these same reasons kept keep cropping up time and time again when I'm speaking to people people who are finding it difficult to learn SQL. And when they choose to work with me, we find ways of making this sort of complaint a thing of the past. 
Now, there's another thing similar to this that I haven't listed in these slides, but I found myself speaking to a lot of university graduates who've studied something like data science or analytics at university, and they have covered SQL to a very, very basic standard, if at all, in emerging university with no discernible SQL skills, which I find is a bit shocking, to be honest. Uh, I do find that a lot of people who have done the online courses, though, end up with what can be described as an almost a generic, almost vanilla understanding of SQL. It's enough, yet at the same time, it's not enough. Enough to get you started, but not enough to make an impact when it matters. And when it matters is usually in a job interview. So what is missing from these courses is the essential skill of problem solving. But I'll focus on that later on. Okay, problem number four is when people do manage to use those cheap or free online resources, make good headway and get a decent grasp of SQL, but certain elements are um, um, causing problems. So I was distracted then by a couple of questions popping up. This is good, by the way, good questions. So uh, this might be things like CTEs or temp tables, maybe even more advanced things like functions, or perhaps it's a, a related third party tool like ETL, SSIS, SRS, so procedures. And that's because it, although SQL is a relatively simple thing to learn to a basic standard, some elements of it are complicated. And you often need to say, I don't get it. Can you try explaining it in a different way? Um, or it could be that the course you've bought doesn't go far enough into or into enough detail for the specific advanced topics that you need to cover. Um, there's only so much you can learn from videos um, and people often need additional support when dealing with um, some of the intricacies at the high end of the language. So after I've done this intro, this is still the intro, by the way, this is one of the things I'll be talking about. OK, and the fifth thing is this is the, this is the one with people causes. Sorry. Start that again. This is the one that causes people most problems and ultimately the most interview fails. And that makes it so frustrating is when you've reached a good understanding of SQL, but you aren't sure how to put that into practice in real world situations. So, for example, maybe you've got a column in the database that's a full name field, like John Smith, Nick Holt. That's me, by the way. Um, and how do you split that into two columns of forename and surname? And it's not as easy as it sounds, especially when some people might have, might have hyphens uh, and double barrel names or maybe formatting somebody's um, age from their birth date into years and months, like 55 years and three months. That's not me. I'm not that old. I'm not far off, but I'm not that old. OK, so these sorts of things require knowledge of the SQL commands, but also a problem solving approach to understanding what the question is and how to implement a solution. You won't find a course on Udemy or Coursera or any video on YouTube that deals with this. Not, not well, anyway, um, they'll teach you how to use the SQL commands and write code correctly. But this problem solving is something that people believe can't really be taught, only comes with practice. But that is such BS. OK, um, and I'll talk about how I teach this and encourage others to learn it themselves. So that's it. The five big problems that I've just published. No, I'm not. I haven't. I'm about to publish. Just done it now. I've just published a poll. Uh, and these five things are the options. So um, I'd love it if you just pop on that poll where you are um, on that. Um, so if your issue and your reason for being here today is not one of these things, then put it in the chat box uh, and I will see if um, something we can perhaps have a deal with. So I'll get some good answers in there. So thank you for that. Um, OK, so this is what I'm going to be focusing on for the rest of the session, how to overcome these barriers, these five problems, because it's ultimately it's all about learning a skill which is going to benefit yourself and your family because it'll super enhance your learning earning potential learning potential um and let's face it this is the reason we go out to work isn't it to look after ourselves and our families so at this point we've talked about the five major issues that people face with learning sql so this seems like a good opportunity for us to just um hop sideways briefly and i'll properly introduce myself so i say who am i i'm nick holt founder and director of the bi school and bi stands for business intelligence and i'm an sql oh 
SQL coach uh, and trainer with 20 years experience of working with SQL. It's a long time. And around 15 years of teaching SQL to people in junior development roles. And during this time, I've designed this thing I mentioned called the SQL Superhero Program. Um, and I've said in this slide, it's my vision to create a simple and effective means for people to learn SQL, to enhance their career. SQL has been awesome for me and my career. I want to share that about there's room for everyone. And there I've said that learning SQL can and should be simple and fun, which is absolutely true. I love SQL uh, and I hope some of my enthusiasm shows through for you today. So getting some good answers in there. So I'll have a look at those um, in a bit. Okay, so these five problems. Oh, my mum's ringing me up. Sorry, mum, I'll have to ring you back. Um, where was I up to? Thanks for that, mum. Um, right, so we're going to break down those barriers and explain why people find themselves in those situations, facing those issues and how to overcome them. So coming up are the solutions to the problems. So let's have a look. So going back to that list of five things, I'm going to begin by focusing on this. The first big problem people face. Now, did people tick this in the poll? Yes, a couple of people said, don't know where to start. So if all you need to know is that you need SQL, you might find that it's a bit daunting and that's because you have no context. And the context is knowing what you'll be doing with SQL in your chosen career path. Um, oops, ah, what have I done here? Ah, okay, so here are some common career options for people wanting, sorry, to working data and what you'll need to obtain those roles. So number one, data, sorry, I always get with Tom twist on this one, entry level data analyst. I've said data analyst, but there are lots of roles that have an analysis theme to them. So for this type of role, you'll need a fairly low level understanding of SQL. You might find in a role like this, you're writing fairly basic queries to create views, to feed data into something like Excel or Power BI. You'll use joins, filters, perhaps some aggregation, some numeric calculations. Now, when I teach SQL, uh, I split it into three stages. I call them walk, run, and fly. And this pretty much is, this, what I'm talking about here on this slide is what I'll cover in the walk phase of that learning process. So it's the basics, okay? Does that make sense? Um, please don't forget to pop your questions uh, and in, into that Q&A box if you're not following or if you've got anything you want to ask. Now, to take that analysis role into a more senior level, you're going to need some capability in things like maybe temp tables, uh, the case statement, handling nulls. You might need to do some data cleaning. So for that, you need a good grasp of string handling with commands like replace and substring. Um, this is intermediate SQL now uh, and the content that I teach in the run phase of that walk, run, fly process. OK, now data engineering is quite an advanced technical role. It's all about moving and transforming data. You need to be able to fly with SQL. Plus, I have good knowledge of some tools like SSIS or Azure Data Factory or DBT. Uh, as for your SQL skills, you need to be able to write SQL queries and, uh, to cover the whole extract, transform and, and load process. Now, business intelligence is all about reporting. So for BI analyst, it's more like much more like a senior data analyst, but with slightly more technical challenges and less emphasis on identifying trends, etc. So a BI analyst would need intermediate skills. And again, this is all about occupying that middle layer between the raw data in the database and the visualization layer. OK, makes sense. Uh, and the BI developer is much like a data engineer in terms of the technical challenges and skills needed. This is about designing and building databases and data warehouse solutions, a lot of coding and writing stored procs. Now, in most of what I do in my day to day um, comes under the umbrella of BI development. So currently I find myself up to my elbows in heavy duty SQL for probably 90 to 95 percent of my working days. Um, and just my luck, the remaining few percent is meetings, honestly. So hopefully that gives you an idea about um, what you're likely to need for your target role. Now, there's also data science, of course, which is not listed here, but that also requires an advanced knowledge of SQL. Okay. Now, you may relate to this person. So Jennifer was someone I worked with who experienced this lack of clarity. She's working in an IT support role and wanted to move into data analytics. 
Um, she'd heard about this career that everyone's talking about. It was a common role, a growing industry, something interesting and something with an analytical mind like hers might be good at. But she didn't really know what was required in terms of the technical skills. That's like what we were just talking about. So she had DM'd, DM'd me on LinkedIn uh, asking how she could break into data analysis. And we arranged a Zoom call, did a screen share, uh, and we looked for some analytics roles. And we're talking about them in terms of uh, like duties, responsibilities, location, hours, working conditions, pay, and of course, skills. Then we chatted about the path she'd need to follow to get there. She needed to brush up on some Excel, but mainly it was SQL with no previous knowledge. So she didn't need to learn anything beyond the basics. So we planned out her learning and in about six weeks of weekly Zoom sessions, the two of us, she'd got to a level where she was pretty decent with SQL. And uh, she started applying for jobs and she got one as well. So that shows that that's a process that worked. It worked for Jennifer, so good work for you too. No reason why not. Um, so let me just refer back to what I was talking about a minute or two ago in case I lost you a bit. Um, I mentioned this walk, run, fly thing. So I should probably expand on that a little. So I've devised a coaching program and I teach SQL to people, many of whom have no previous knowledge some of the basic knowledge, and I split it into these three modules. And the first one is walk. Okay, so I explain some database concepts, we cover the basics, um, enough for those entry level roles I mentioned. By the end of this section, we're touching on some more complex topics. Then we move into run phase where it picks up in terms of technical challenge and we cover some intermediate content and techniques. And the fly phase is where I show you some advanced topics like creating your own database objects like stored procedures and functions. And we take a peek at performance and other technical subjects. Uh, and I help people through the whole process with one-to-ones, group sessions, and plenty of backup encouragement and support. And that is the SQL Superhero Program. So I hope that makes things a bit clearer because I'll probably keep referring back to that as I go on, but I'll talk about it in more detail uh, shortly. <clears throat> so the next one is people don't know where to start. No, I've done that one. Um, no, people don't know what to focus on. Okay, I've not done my slide correctly there. So, um, yeah, so I've talked about the roadmap I've, de I've developed over a number of years. The lights just flickered then. And I've talked about the walk, run, fly thing. So it's all about knowing where to start and what to learn next. Um, so what I'll do is basically list everything you need to know, but I'll condense it down a bit. So we're over here on that. Okay. So let's flip back to this walk, run, fly thing. <clears throat> so I teach SQL the way I was taught it. Some people begin with te their teaching with some quite advanced topics, and I fundamentally disagree with this kind of approach. I think it's confusing and it's overwhelming. So when I do it, I begin with select from where in a join left join. Uh, and group by, and I refer to these commands as Nick's super six. I'm Nick, remember? And then we do uh, date and time functions and the case statement. So this is the order I'd suggest you learn it in when you're learning SQL on your own. Um, and then it's handling um, strings, converting data types, handling nulls and combining data, set, data sets. So the commands for combining data sets are union, and union all. And then there's other stuff like order by and top end and probably some others. So by the time you've gone through all that, you've got a, a good basis of learning there. You might even be able to get through a, a fairly low level job interview. Now, if all of that means nothing to you, don't worry. It's just some of the basics of SQL and uh, it's easily taught. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this yourself, you need to take that list, do your own research, plan your own time, keep yourself motivated and be accountable to yourself. But if you're one of my students, I'll teach you personally, provide guidance, jump on one-to-ones whenever you need it and whatever to get you through. And I challenge you at each stage to make sure you nailed it because that's really important. If you're doing it yourself, you need to challenge yourself. Um, okay, so by this point, you've learned the basics um, and there's no need to be overly concerned if what I'm talking about here is entirely new to you. Well, this stuff you'll be learning, whether with me or on your own. Now, in the run phase, we ramp it up a little. Uh, SQL itself isn't a massively complicated subject to learn. But as we progress through it, it can get tricky at times. So phase two, oh, done it again, haven't I? Phase two, called run, you need to look at um, derived tables and subqueries, CTEs and temp tables, 
variables and parameters, window functions, some basic manipulation, that's insert, update and delete, uh, and some slightly more advanced topics like views and pivoting. Um, and I said recursion there. As well. So um, some of these can be quite challenging, but there's no reason why you can't do these yourself. If you if you have ambitions to take uh, senior sort of data analysis to senior level or get into business intelligence, then you'll need to smash this lot. Okay, there's, but there's nothing to stop you doing it. As I said, people who work with me will get there quicker, but it's not the only way. Um, and on to the final phase now. And if you really want to fly with SQL, and this is where it's at, we're talking ETL processes like the merge statement, one of my favorites, um, reports and stored procedures. So here we're getting into automation and building robust uh, data flow processes, building user-defined functions. So again, touching on database development here with some advanced stuff. Performance and optimization of some of this is super advanced SQL, but a lot of it is just about structuring your code. Certain little tips and tricks I can show you to get a better performance from your work. And then loops and dynamic SQL. Now, if you happen to get this far and this deeply into SQL, you will be amazed what you can do with um, sort of loops and dynamic SQL. Uh, there's some mind blowing topics that you should look at, but only when you've got a good solid understanding of SQL, not for the faint hearted. Okay, so wow, that's a, a mind melting whistle stop sort of SQL line. Pretty much everything technical you need to learn. Of course, there's much more to it. And that much more is about practice, being challenged and problem solving. And that's something I'll talk about later. That's number five of these so-called big five problems. So any questions, um, please remember to challenge them in challenge. Type them into the Q&A box. I'll, I'll ask, I'll address those at the end. Can't get the word challenge out of my head. Okay, that's because someone just put a comment on says subquery is still challenging me. And I was trying to read that and do my um, presentation at the same time. Right, focus. Okay, so number three of those problems is this. Trying online courses, but it doesn't work. Now, I am absolutely shocked because nobody actually tick this in the poll normally it's the highest one so i couldn't tell you the number of time people i've spoken to during my time with the bi school who fall into this category so um i was <laughs> yes yeah, so i was gonna say let me know if you're one of these but clearly you're not because no one's ticked that so on one hand it's great they can get courses for low prices uh, or free even um but the trouble is, the flip side is you almost have too much choice and it's too easy to start a course and lose interest or fail to engage with it. And after a while, you, you abandon it and try something else. So um, the thing lacking it with these courses is accountability. There's no one asking how it's going, what additional support or help you need. And also asking a question can be a challenge in itself. Um, or at least getting a good answer. Some people thrive in a more supported environment, and this is not only perfectly acceptable, but quite normal. There are also more expensive paid courses, even boot camps, which you can spend thousands on and yet still not graduate with a confidence in your SQL knowledge. So what is the solution? Well, if you're insistent on going down the self-learning route and doing online courses, there are ways to make it work. So number one is do a lot of research into which courses are worth doing. So get on LinkedIn and look for information on there and look at website reviews. Maybe have a look on LinkedIn to see which people have completed certain courses and um, get in touch and say, what did you think of it? So don't assume that a course provided by someone like Google is going to be good just because it's Google. And don't assume that a more costly course is good just because it's expensive. Okay, contact the course provider, you know, what you're trying to establish is, is this course going to benefit benefit me and do they deserve my money? Okay, you definitely need to make sure that there's a solid support method provided. Okay, so you can ask questions, book one-to-ones with the tutor, a regular coaching course to back up the training. Ask the question, how do I ask a question? Will I get an answer? When will I get an answer? Will I have to wait a week or a month? Now, the speed and efficiency and accuracy of the way they deal with those questions will tell you a lot about the support they provide to their learners. 
What you don't want is just a lot of videos and no help. And what you don't want is to hand over your hard earned and it'd be a waste of money. So it's all about support, help, guidance, mentorship. They're the absolute pillars of learning. We all need it, whether we're learning whatever. I recently started learning German and the best decision I made was getting a private tutor. Made a huge difference for me having a tutor and it wasn't massively expensive either. Um, okay, so moving on. So a few people have clicked this saying oh, um, they have some SQL knowledge, but um, they're hoping to use that knowledge to get a better job. But one thing holding them back might be that they've plateaued. They've reached a level of skill and knowledge, which is enough to do their current job, maybe get a data, uh, like an, an entry level role, but they are struggling to break through that ceiling to the higher levels, the harder levels. And it might be things like temporary tables, CTEs, that was a good one, user-defined functions. And there's nothing online that explains these in a way that makes sense. So here that roadmap I'm going to share is going to help because for one thing it explains at which point in your learning you should tackle these things, but also gives you some advice on where to find the information. Now, the things about these more important topics is that they're harder to understand, therefore harder to teach. So you might find a lot of people trying to explain them, but not a lot perhaps getting their point across. Now, I include all these topics in my programme uh, and I feel I can somewhat smugly say with some confidence that I've found a means of teaching the higher level elements of SQL that seems to work. Uh, that said, uh, teaching people, uh, so general people have more questions about the more technical stuff. And it stands to reason because support I offer comes in useful there. So if you're going to go it alone, that roadmap will help. Uh, it's on its way to you if you hang around a little longer. Um, now, this might not look like a big one on the surface, but it is actually. And seven out of you have actually ticked this. And it's about, um, it's difficult to offer much in the way of, well, it's difficult to offer much in the help and advice, but I do some, have some nuggets I can offer. So the first thing is, why is this important? Well, when you learn SQL from an online course or whatever source, um, and I'll, I, they'll teach you the commands and i'll use an example here some date time functions so we talked earlier about figuring out age from date so there are functions in sql for extracting portions of the date from a full date field such as month or weekday name and the online course will explain how these things work what they do and they'll give you some examples what they won't show you is how you use those functions to figure out something like age from a birthday or length of service from a start date. And that's the sort of challenge that you actually have to face on a daily basis out there in the real world, out there. Um, so there are some things you can do. Well, one is to present yourself with challenges. You can download a sample database for free from Kaggle or some similar website and ask questions of yourself, like right? what were the sales of a product last year or this year to date or in the last full month? How do those sales um, compare to the same month previous year? OK, what was the percentage of product B sales compared to the total? Because it's exactly the sorts of things you have to face in industry. OK, option two is to go to a website like Leak Code or Data Lima and take on the challenges that they present. Now, this will greatly enhance your understanding of SQL commands and syntax. And you'll find that that prepares you for another challenge you'll have to face. And that is, of course, the technical assessment in a job interview. That little delight is coming your way and you need to be ready for it. And this sort of thing will help you to do that. So those are the main issues I'm seeing on a daily basis and some ideas on how you can overcome these. So whatever your solution, sorry, whatever your situation, there's a solution. Now, the act of working through that solution might be difficult and challenging. All that study, all that research, long hours at the laptop and new evenings or weekends. But the process itself should be something reasonably straightforward and logical. So what are your options now? That's what it says there. Well, you can go it alone. Take on board those things I said. Get that roadmap. Do it yourself. It will get you there. Now, it might take a while, um, a while longer than with help. It might be a difficult and often lonely process. But you'll ultimately learn or enhance your SQL knowledge to the desired level. Uh, and the second option is to accept my help. So you might be wondering, what does my help look like? 
What does my hell look like? Um, it looks like the sequel superhero program. Okay. Now, I've spoken already about how I teach SQL in this program. How I'll break it down to those three pillars, those three stages of walk, run, and fly. And every person is different. You each have your own preferred methods of learning, your own starting points, your own targets. So after you sign up to the SQL Superhero Program, we have an onboarding call, one-to-one, -one, you and I, where we make a plan for you. You tell me what you already know about SQL, what your career ambitions are. You tell me how many hours or days you can realistically expect to commit in an average week. You tell me about other things going on in your life, your kids, your commitments, your work commitments, and we make a plan. Now, it isn't something I'll be using to beat you with if you fall behind schedule, but it's a way of setting expectations for both of us. For me, so I know how to support you best. And for you, so I have an idea of when you're finished, ready to start applying for jobs if that's your goal. Next, I'll give you access to our training portal. In there are between 30 and 40 videos. Uh, and new ones are often being added. These are tutorial videos where I tackle a topic provide explanations, examples, set a challenge, and ask you to pause the video and complete the challenge and then unpause and see my solution. So those videos are broken down into this walk, run, fly structure, so it should flow nicely. Next, you'll be added to our uh, growing WhatsApp group where you'll receive updates and information about the program. You'll be involved from that point in a little mini community of lovely, like-minded, supportive people going through the exact same process, albeit at different stages. Uh, next, you're invited to our weekly uh, SQL support sessions, uh, meetings via Zoom, where you get to come and ask questions. So if you've come across something that you need a little extra, little extra help with, you can do that there. Uh, anything you need to talk about related to the program, that's the place to do it. And there are no stupid questions and, there are, and there's no judgment. Like I said, everyone's at different stages. Last week, one of our guys had a question about date and time functions. So I opened up SQL, uh, shared my screen and tried to explain it in a different way. And that was it, problem solved. And then there's the one-to-ones. Now, if I had to state one element of this program, which knocks the competition into a cocked hat, this would be it. This is what makes us special. You can, at any time, book in a one-to-one -one 30 minute session with me. And there's no limit to the number of sessions. You can book as many of these as you need and people do. Now, some people prefer to do the whole thing on one-to-ones, and I just teach them on a weekly on weekly calls. It's a slower process, but it gets the results. Now, in the last few weeks, I've done one-to-ones with my students to help people prepare for job interviews, because that's something I focus heavily on. People also book these one-to-ones to brush up on specific skills, actually go through online job applications. I did one of those last week. Uh, review lessons and challenges, loads of stuff. And here's what else, right? Honest truth, I absolutely love doing these. It brings me closer to the people I'm helping, and it's always really beneficial. Uh, and then there's just the ongoing support. I'm always on the end of a WhatsApp message. You can hit me up whenever you're stuck. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It's not always immediate, but whenever I can. Um, now, that slide there on screen, that's it. When I think about it, that's everything I've been working towards for the last... 15 or 20 years on one slide. You can get a photo of that. You should ask me to sign it. I've got a good mind to make posters or T-shirts out of that slide because it sums up what I do for you, um, how I do it and how it could be so incredibly transformative for you in your lives and careers. I love that. I just want to sit here and look at it a bit longer. Imagine what you could do with all that, what all that could do for you. Anyway, I'll stop... Um, patting myself on the back and um, get on with it. Okay, so this was literally what Jake did. Now, Jake was someone who worked with us a while ago. And what he did was to go through these steps and got these results. It was it was mad what happened. He absolutely was smashing it. All he had to do was follow what I said step by step, have his hand held, jump on the calls and work with me. And you can see exactly what he did. I'm not going to read that out. It's right there for you. But people are doing this right now. If you want these positions, you need to understand that this is the shortcut. A uh, similar story with AO. We did the exact same thing. He was actually my first client um, doing uni um, a university program in application development, but struggling with SQL. So we worked together for a few uh, weeks and taught him SQL. Uh, this morning on LinkedIn, was it this morning? 
I think it was this morning, I, I did a post on LinkedIn where I did a bit of a shout out to um, just a handful of my students. So if you connect with me on LinkedIn, go and have a look at that because it shows these are real people getting real results. Okay. People can do amazing things when managed in the right way uh, and motivated. People regularly surprise themselves with their own progress. Um, so there's some great online reviews. So we can easily find those and not read those out. This is one from Trust Pilot. A few more here from LinkedIn. Um, I've obscured the guys' names just to protect their privacy. My point here, and the reason I'm showing you these, is to show that this works and has worked for a number of people over the last 15 to 18 months. So just give me a sec whilst I have a quick sip. Your mouth's drying out. Okay. So... The question you're probably asking is how much? 1,200, does that sound fair? If you think how much extra you could learn with top door SQL skills, you'd add way more than that to your salary each year, no mistake. So does 1,200 sound okay? Well, nah, I'm doing all this for 800 pounds currently. Sorry about that, I just wanted to build the suspense. Um, it's been a quiet day. Um, so what's next? Okay, so your next step B should Next step should be to book in a call with me to discuss how we can look to support you. And you do that by hovering over that QR code with your camera. Uh, you should be able to book a date and a time for a call. It's a 20 or 30 minute call by Zoom. It's not a big heavy handed sales call because you already know what it's about, how much it is, what's involved. If you do have any questions, though, now will be a good time to pop them in the um Q&A box because we're nearly finished. Okay, so there are five slots available and when they're gone, they're gone. I restrict myself to five new customers a month. That's just so I can make sure everyone gets the time and attention they need and deserve. As I said, it's a Zoom call. It's just a way of me making sure we're suited for each other and a system meeting everyone before they sign up. Okay, let's see if you've asked any questions in the Q&A window and you have, this is all good. <clears throat> okay, Henry, with the rise of AI, do you see SQL developers being replaced or will the industry adapt to work with AI? Okay, this isn't Terminator. Okay, um, I, I think AI can do a lot of amazing things, but um, I've had long conversations with um, Bing, Bing's chat box, but um, I, I don't think it can it can replace the human element of, of SQL. I think we're quite safe. I think SQL is on the rise um, and it's been going for 50 years and it'll keep going for another 50 at least. Um, so Jenna, Jenna Dist, I hope I pronounced that right. What resources are best for SQL training skills for beginners? Real task with explanations. Good websites are W3 schools. Um, <coughs> There's a couple, I'm going, um, you can always get some good, I mean, oh, Alex the Analyst on YouTube, he does some, a good program for kind of introductory SQL. Um, and then there's things on, like I mentioned earlier, Elite Code and Data Lima. They might be a bit more advanced than um, basic, but they're good for SQL training. Um, of course, there's my own program as well, which I've just talked about. Uh, then again, which function do I advance? Okay, when I'm talking about advanced functions, I'm talking about things like perhaps window functions are maybe intermediate. Uh, advanced might be things like building user-defined functions um, and still procs, that sort of thing is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about advanced. Okay, hope that answers your question. Emmanuel says, how do we start with the walk stage? Well, the walk stage is the basic stuff, and I, 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 had a, I had a slide on that early to show you what these specific topics were. Now, if you have, have lasted this far, and I still I can still I can see you're still with us, uh, you'll get that um, SQL roadmap, and that'll kind of map out what you need to learn and in what order. So that'll answer that question for you. And then, <clears throat> yes, Mars, I have spot on. Walk is basic, run is intermediate, and fly is advanced. Yes, hundred percent. So great. So that is um that is it. So I can see um I think I've had a slot booked up already, which is good. 
Um, let me just finish off now. So that's the end of the session. Um, I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget there's only five, well, four slots available now. So get in quickly because they do tend to go quite quickly. So I will see you next time or on that call that you're about to book. Okay. So thank you for joining and goodbye. And at that point, we are going to go. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.